Hi, my name is Danielle. This is my channel Star KHC. I'm going to be reviewing the Gilded Ones from our tour stop for the Gilded Ones Hero Voices book tour or the Gilded Ones book tour hosted by Hero Voices. Yes, I gave this book five out of five stars. I really loved it. It wasn't like the the best book I've read like ever. It's definitely the top, the, the best book I've read so far this year. It's the fourth book I've read, but it's the best book I've read so far this year. I gave, I gave this book five out of five stars. I'm going to be um like talking about different elements um of the book, what I liked and what could have done better, and also some of the themes and discussing some of the themes I noticed in this book. Okay, great. This book is about. Okay, so I didn't like the description that I gave, so I'm just going to read the one from Goodreads. 16-year-old Decca lives in fear and anticipation of the blood ceremony that will determine whether or not she will become a member of her village. Already different from everyone else because of her unnatural intuition, Decca prays for red blood so she can finally feel like she belongs. But on the day of the ceremony, her blood runs gold, the color of impurity, and Decca knows she will face a consequence worse than death. Then a mysterious woman comes to her with a choice. Stay in the village and submit to her fate, or leave to fight for the emperor in an army of girls just like her. They are called Alaki, mere immortals with rare gifts, and they are the only ones who can stop the empire's greatest threat. Knowing the dangers that lie ahead yet yearning for acceptance, Decca decides to leave the only life she's ever known. But as she journeys to the capital to train for the biggest battle of her life, she will discover that the Great Walled City holds many surprises. Nothing and no one are quite what they seem, not even Decca herself. Content warnings for death, disownment, loss of a parent or loved one, mutilation, pedophilia, rape, starvation, trauma, torture, violence or violence, and blood. Trigger warnings were taken from booktriggerwarnings.com. Thank you. Bye. So yeah, I liked Decca's character development. She went from like this really shy, um, yeah, really shy really she's really down on herself because she's like oh my god i'm so impure blah, blah blah and she's she's trying her best to become a very good soldier for the emperor because they have the offer is if they serve the emperor for 20 years and survive um there for 20 years they get to be absolved on their their impure blood will be turned into pure blood and then they can go back and live their lives with their family go back to their village their community wherever and live their life she's like okay i need to I need to be a good soldier and like I need to become pure. But as she's staying there, she's like discovering that, oh, um, I should not be treating myself like this. Um, the other girls shouldn't be thinking about themselves like this. I am a good I am a great person. I can do this. I'm doing great. And she's making friends and everything. So I love her character development going from, you know, beating herself up and believing herself to be like the bottom of the barrel to believing in herself and becoming this badass soldier, right? So um, I love her character development. I love the fall. Hold on, it's hot in here. Okay, so the first thing I love is Decca's character development. From the beginning of the book, she was really shy. She was really doubtful of herself. She wasn't very nice to herself. She had very hateful, internalized thoughts, something I know very much about. Anyways, yeah, because first of all, she is different from everybody else in her village because her mother was an outsider. Her mother was from the southern part of the country, so she's very dark. She's she's very dark, she has thick hair, and she doesn't look like everybody else in her village. So yeah, she's always like keeping her, she's trying to make herself as small as possible, trying not to be noticed by anybody else. She wraps her cloak like uh, around her body as much as possible because she lives um, in somewhere that's very cold, so she has to exclusively wear the cloak. And she wraps herself, she covers herself as much as possible so that she's not uh, making herself noticed by anybody. But like when she went, when she went to the training ground and she's becoming a soldier she's opening up she's realizing that yeah i am a worthy person i'm good at this i'm like fucking badass girl i can do all this shit and yeah she's and she's making friends and she's like inspiring other friends and in fact inspiring the other girls that had to go the fun family trope the fun family was also the friendship group the family friendship group was something that developed was something i also really loved it it kind of happened kind of instantaneously, but you can understand that it has to happen like that because it has to happen like that because they're going there. They, the girls with the guild with gold blood are treated like trash because you know they were killed immediately before, and now they are like worked harder than the the boys who are, you know, being trained. The the, the male recruits who are being trained to regular soldiers because in this world, you know, men 
do everything. Men are the soldiers, men are the police, and the women, yeah, they wear masks, so they can't show their face other than to their family and to really close friends. When they go out, they have to have a male escort, and they only do everything to serve their family. So it's a very misogynistic, very um, patriarchal world. So yeah, they're treated worse, they're treated worse than the male recruits. And so the reason the friend group is formed, because they, they said, oh, we need to take care of each other. So it was formed really instantaneously, but um, after it was formed, they did like, original when we were formed, most of them weren't even really friends. They were just saying that, okay, we are in this group, we need to take care of each other, and but I still don't like you. But then they started developing the training and they're becoming real friends and they're talking, having conversations and like, oh my God, yeah, the friendship is developing. Developing. So that's something I really love. The friendship was something I really love. The romantic development was something that also could have been worked on a little bit. The okay, so it was between Decca and the male recruit that she was partnered with, like the guild the girls with Gold Blood and the male recruits, the Jatu. Each everybody was partnered, everybody had a partner and they were supposed to be like, Okay, brothers in arms, sisters in arms. Um, they're supposed to protect each other. But you know, since the girls are Gold one they're supposed to be dead. Most of the the Jatu the Jatu was treat them like shit. So when when um she's partnered up with her partner, he didn't like outright treat her terribly, but like he was he just looked at her away and she was like, Oh my god, this guy does not like me. And then after that there was a whole training scene where the first time they trained, the girls trained with the recruits, the girls were holding themselves back like how they would in their village trying to hide their powers and stuff because they have enhanced they have enhanced powers as well. Like they can run faster, they're much stronger everything like their gold blood is really doing things for them and they were like the girls other than Decca they were running like four steps behind the boys and they were like oh we don't want to scare the boys and Decca is like oh my god like we are demons and she's like are we girls or are we demons that's what the line for the book the the line like are we girls or are we demons she's like we are demons um we have to survive they will never survive they will never be treated like we are treated so we have to train as hard as we can do our best so we don't go out there and die our final death on the battlefield don't you want to go back and she's still like thinking, oh, I still want to be pure at this point. She's like, oh, don't you want to go back to be, don't you want to be purified and go back to your family? And to do that, you have to survive. And to survive, you have to train like properly. So don't hold yourself back. And that's where she uplifts everybody. But um, yeah, her romance with that, with her, no, well, I don't remember his name, like Kita, I think it's Kita. Most of it was developed off screen. So, like their whole romance thing was more of a tell and not show. So it's like, oh, she would say when they went on a raid to kill some death strikers, when people weren't looking, we would hold hands and we would hug and then they have like, sometimes they have little conversations where their friendship was developed on screen and the romance, it was there and I was rooting for it, but a lot of it was done off the page and then we were told about it after. And I'm like, I could have rooted for it a little bit more if some more stuff happened, like more of the development happened on the page because the, the as i said the development was done off the page and then by the time they had feelings for each other that's when stuff started showing up on the page so i'm like oh i wish i wish a little bit more backstory was shown like in the story and not just told about me after the fact the world building was okay but um most of it was done like very early on like in the first 30 pages it was just like Dika thinking oh this is what happened this is what happened this is what happened and then we didn't get much more and she's like, oh, there's an animal. There's like, there's an animal, like a Zerizard or something. And she described it and said, oh, my mother told me about this because her mother, as I said, she was an outsider in the village. She was from the south. So she's like, her mother told her about these animals. And you know, I wish she was still alive so she could see it. And then it was just like them fighting and stuff. And it would get, we didn't get much world building until the end when she discovers something when she finds out something new and they will get some more mythology and more history and that mythology was very interesting i really wanted more of it hopefully we'll get some in the next book because it was really interesting it was really intriguing but it happened like way at the end of the book or close to the end of the book so i'm like i really wanted some more of that the magic system it wasn't very it wasn't a very advanced magic system it was just the blood gives the girls enhanced powers they're like very strong stronger than like um, one of the girls, that is like before she started training, she could lift up, lift up a cow with one hand. So I don't know what I should tell you. That's how strong they were. They were very fast, you know, very fast. They had enhanced powers. So like it was all due to their blood because they descended that from the original gilded ones, right? So that was really it. Well, there's a reveal at the end where there's some more, but it's, it's basically the same thing. So there wasn't really anything else. There wasn't really much magic to understand or to explain. So like, there's not really anything to say, oh, it's a pro or a con. It was just there. It was that one thing 
and that was it. So, so most of the characters were likable. The guys that were supposed to like were pretty likable. It was easy to pick. Um, it was easy to like. Yeah. So the themes in the book. So the first theme is racism and colorism, and that has to do with you know the different whether they're from the north, south, west, or east. They they're, they represent. They, they have different skin colors. Represent different races and ethnicities. And when you have, there's a whole thing between the North and the South, they don't like each other. And there's a scene in the beginning of the book before Decca discovered she had gold blood, where it was the scene of the purity, that the purity testing, where they would get cut and they would see which, what color their blood was. Um, this, some visitors came to their village to try and see what the girls looked like before they put on the mask, because after they would be able to wear to go without the mask until after they were proven to be pure. So the guy, the, the men from other villages and areas would come around to see how beautiful they were and to like look at the prizes and before they would have to put on the mask. And that's when a lot of men would propose to the girls and whatever. And he saw her and because she was dark, he thought that she was a prostitute from somewhere else. So he was making a move on her and another guy from her village had to come and protect her. Yeah, so it's a whole thing. So that's the racism and colorism. Um, that one, okay, so the racism and colorism is kind of a minor theme. It's not really a major theme because that was, it was most in the beginning when it was like a whole thing, an issue when I was a conflict. So like, as, it, as she goes to like starting to train, it wasn't really a thing. So it was, it was actually a very minor thing. Um, feminism and misogyny. So as I said, the world, the world is a patriarchal world and a misogynistic world. Um, that one is definitely a major theme because throughout the whole book, whether it was other recruits coming and saying, oh, you are a woman, you don't deserve to be soldiers, you know, call, everybody calling them poor, saying they're doing ungodly things by being soldiers and whatever, whatever. Um, yeah, misogyny was discussed. It was also shown in Decca's character development because in the beginning, she's like, oh my God, I need to be pure. And she's telling herself, she's like seeing all these things happening and then she's saying, oh, a woman shouldn't do this and this or a woman shouldn't do this and this based on this book called the Infinite Book of Wisdoms or the Infinite Wisdoms or something like that. And it's a very misogynistic book, like overtly misogynistic. And she's like saying, okay, women should not do this and this and this. But then as she goes on, she's like, is this really right though? Something don't seem right. Something don't seem right about this. And she's like, okay. And then as she develops, she kind of like says, you know, that's really stupid. I'm not going to do that. I'm just fighting. And then book develops. So yeah, she breaks out of the internalized misogyny, but the world around her is still misogynistic. And that's one of the major conflicts that's probably going to be in the next book. And the equality and inequality ties in with the sexism misogyny um, argument. That was the same, same examples can be shown. You know, women not able to be, women are not allowed to, to go to school, they're not allowed to fight, they're only supposed to, they're not even allowed to use knives until after the purity thing because if they, if they get cut early, it might, um, what's it called? If they get cut early, it's going to increase their chances of them being impure or something. So yeah. Um, yeah, so that's one of the themes. And abuse, abuse is a very big theme because, you know, once they're proven impure, they go through, like, if they're not killed immediately, they're, like, um, sold into prostitution or they're bled. When they're bled, they, they, they get cut and their gold, their blood is collected and sold as gold to make their village rich. So abuse is definitely a big theme in the book. Yeah, so themes, feminism, sexism, racism, misogyny, equality, inequality, abuse. Oh, the action scenes were another thing that I, I actually really liked. So yeah, that's what I gave. Five to five star. This book, by the time this video is out, the book February 8th. The book is out tomorrow, February 9th. Um, I really recommend, I highly recommend this book. You should check it out. Um, check the relevant links in my description for my other social media and for um, links for to help things that are going on all over the world. Ways you can help things that are going on in the world. Regarding like, uh, um, oh yes, the, the tour schedule for the other tour stuff for this tour will also be linked in the description. Regarding like, comment, and subscribing, do what you want. Bye.